guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Gnomes and Wizards by Kevin Wire Games. It plays two to four players, takes about, it says 90 to 120 minutes, but I'm actually going to say it's probably 45 to maybe maybe 90 minutes. I mean, based on the number of players, of course. 14 and up, and in the game Gnomes and Wizards, it's a tactical game with a little bit of area control. You're going to be playing as a wizard, moving around the board, attempting to control spaces, summon your your powerful clans and decimate your opponents. It's fairly simple how it works. You'll get a set of die, you'll roll those die based on the number of clans you have. You'll do this type of Yahtzee thing where you'll roll, choose some, roll, choose some, and then finally you'll have what you want, hopefully. Then you're going to assign those die on your clans or on your character, whether it be increasing your attack or your defense, being able to summon unique monsters, or gaining crystals which allow you to do certain abilities on your game board. After you've done that, then you're going to move your characters, you're going to attack with them, or you're going to simply attack there's certain rules regarding how you choose to do these things. Then you're going to choose maybe to spend your abilities or not. And then you're going to pass up to use all your characters to your best ability. The rounds will go through 10 different rounds. And after the first five rounds, the sixth round will have you start flipping over tiles, which basically signifies the end game, where you're going to be simply removing tiles from the board, making it smaller and smaller, condensing it to the point where players are going to have to collide into each other and fight for supremacy. Based on the number of players, how big the board is, and the game will conclude when somebody defeats everybody or at the end of the game there's a certain, certain like scoring method but that's the basic idea for gnomes and wizards let's go and take it down below so here's the game, Gnomes and Wizards, and everything included. We're going to talk about the setup a little bit. We're going to talk about what comes in here. Then we're just going to take it down below, and I'll show you how basically a round is played, and what you can do, and how the end game kind of functions. As you can see, this is set up for two players. you got two separate player boards, along with the characters that they're going to be included with. This one here is Bargloomin Leader, and this one over here is the Matrivith Leader. This is the red player. This is the green, or I guess turquoise player. Each of the cards will tell you how fast they move, how much damage they do, whether they have defense, and of course how much health they have, which are represented with these little things here, these little guys that you'll attach to the cards specifically. When characters die, they're removed from the game. Additionally, each of the player boards is going to have these little tokens here that are set on the boards, which will illustrate the different clans that can be put into the game when you choose to summon them from the board here. So I'll just place these here for now, but they're going to go on the board. Additionally, go ahead and place this little token here on the active clan slot, which is going to start at zero, but we'll move up, and as it moves up, you're going to get more die on your turn, which will give you more things to do. The rest of the characters here, the rest of the decks, the rest of the player boards, and the rest of the character tiles are all set aside in a two-player game, but if you're playing with more players, you will add those, and there's certain rules. This is set up for two players, but of course the board is bigger when you play with more players. Additionally, you're going to take this little board here, which comes set aside, place it attached to the board, and then start it at one. This will determine the rounds of the game, and it'll also show you when you're going to start flipping over tiles. Each of these characters here are going to have their own space on the board that they're going to start in some way. I'll just place them there for now. And you're going to start with four die, the black die or your basic active die. And these over here are bonus die you'll get throughout the game as you acquire new clans. Additionally, there's a bunch of tokens in the game, whether it be for fatigue, whether it be for defense, or whether it be for a plethora of other different things you can use them for. There's going to be these crystals here, which will stack onto larger crystals, which will be utilized in passive ability cards, as well as abilities on specific areas on the player boards regarding the specific clans that are out to play. Uh, there's some extra pieces that will be for the other players. And of course, these cards here which are going to have active abilities and passive abilities, some that will function with clans, and like just like this one here, and other ones which are just going to simply use them instantly. They'll do some unique abilities that you can gain from the die as you roll them. The final thing here to talk about, other than there's some extra little pieces of the box, but there's also these useful player references, which tell you how to play your turn, and also tells you what all the different actions, abilities, and tokens do throughout the game. And that's pretty much what you get. It's pretty much the setup for each of the players, and and how you're going to establish all of the boards in the game gnomes and wizards let's go ahead and take it down below now and i will simply show you how to play around how you roll the die how you start flipping over tiles and whatnot and then the basic idea for scoring and then i'll review it so here we have a two-player setup for gnomes and wizards. I went ahead and took out the rest of the components because we don't need those. All the extra character leaders, clans, tiles, and pieces are set aside as well as player boards. Here is the setup for two players. I have them set, situated across the map. This board over here, everything's pretty much set up as previously mentioned, and we're pretty much ready to go. I went ahead and put the defense at the lowest point and the HP at the highest point for both leaders because these characters are your leaders. And we're ready to talk about the game as far as how it functions. 
we will be using this little card here as reference to explain turn order. The first thing you do, if it is round 6 through 10, you're going to take tiles from the outskirts and flip them over, removing them from the game, uh, up until the point we get to the 10th round and the game is over. So these tiles are going to start on the edges and slowly collapse inward. But if it's the first round through the 5th, you're going to ignore that step. You're then going to roll die like Yahtzee. You will simply roll once. Choose any that you'd like to keep, set them aside, re-roll again, and then finally re-roll for a last time, and then you're stuck with whatever you get. The number of die you roll is based on the number of clans you have, the lowest being 4, the highest being 10. These are the extra action die that you will use, so it is a community pile of action die. Then, after you've went ahead and selected whatever you want to use here, you are then going to enact movement and or attack. Movement and attack is going to be based on the character's movement attack found in the top left and right hand side of each of the character cards. And each of the tokens that you have, which represents one of the clans from the cards below the character here, will be set next to the character as you choose to utilize them. Now, you're only starting with just this one to begin with. However, when you get certain things on these die, you'll be able to summon new monsters and bring them out into the field. So, for instance, if I was playing with this red guy here, I would go ahead and take this if I was summoning the bears and place it here. And then the bearers will be able to activate, so that's a very useful way of getting new guys out, as well as the fact that you can then place crystals on areas that are depleted or empty that have clans out on the field. Additionally, when you summon a new clan, you'll move this active clan die or token over to uh, the 5 area, or 6 or 7 or 8, based on the number of clans you have out, which will give you a new active die on your next turn. So, let's go ahead and talk about the die really quick here. There's different sides of the die, and let's talk about these three first. This one here is crystals. Whenever you have empty spaces on your clan board, you can simply charge those spaces up by placing on crystals based on the number that you rolled, that being one crystal, and this being two. You can never place more crystals than the number uh, allotted to you based on the board. So in this case, this one says two, three, three, two, four, and three. That's all you need to charge the abilities up to utilize them, and each of the abilities are very different. Additionally, you have this side here, which is an attack slash movement. You'll take this after you've rolled all of your die and chose to keep them and place them on your either your main wizard or any of your clans and choose to either increase their movement or attack by one. And you can do that for as many die as you have this symbol. This one here is a horn. If you have less than three, you can draw cards equal to the horns that you have and then choose one card. So if you only have one horn, you draw one and choose to keep that card. If you had two horns, you'd draw two and choose one of them. These are the cards in the game, whether they be character passives that you can place on your characters that will give you a unique ability that functions very similarly to these areas here. Or if you're using these cards, the secret cards, you can save in your hand and utilize when the time comes. This is a big stack of cards from the deck and they have a bunch of different abilities. Then you're going to have another interesting one, which is this one here. And this one here is the defense, which will increase your character's defense based on the number you roll, you'll move this up here. Finally, we'll talk about the horns again. When you have three horns, there is a special ability you can do, and that is going to be called Call to War, or Summon a Tribe. And the way you do that is you have your character on a space that represents a tribe that you haven't previously summoned, and then you're going to take that specific tribe and place it down on the board along with a character. So for instance, or a card. So for instance, if I want to go here and I, have, and I was locked in with these four, I can choose to summon the bears. So I'm going to take the bears, place that over here. Now I have the ability to summon uh, crystals on here for their active ability or passive ability. I'm going to get out a new clan card, which is the Bear Berserkers, and place it somewhere next to my board. And then I'm going to place their lowest defense and their highest HP. Note their, their movement and their attack. And now I have another clan on the board, which I can go ahead and utilize to move and whatnot. Um, there's specific rules as to when you can move them, how you can move them, whether it be the first time you summon them. And uh, attacking works fairly simply as well. But that's basically how you summon these guys. Then after you've gone ahead and... Uh, that's basically all the dice here. So let's go ahead and talk about more of your, your turns. So after you finish rolling your die and assigning your die, then you're going to go ahead and move on to your execution phase, which is you're going to do movement and attack. So you'll basically move based on the character's movement, unless you want to attack as well, which means that you get one less movement. And then if you're on any spaces of any bad guys, you will attack. Additionally, uh, whenever you're like this for attacking, you're going to simply take your leaders or whatever characters you are fighting against, and you're going to look at their stats. And in this case, let's uh, say that this characters look like this, and red was attacking green here. Red's attack is three, and green's defense is five, which means that red will do half its damage rounded down, which is going to be one, and then green's going to lose one defense. And that is always how it works whenever your attack is lower than the opponent's defense. They will take a certain amount of damage, 
which would be one, they would lower their defense down by one. If, for instance, however, this character had full health, this character had three defense, and this character here had a bonus attack, which means his, it's now three and four, four is higher than three, so he will take the full amount of damage, pushing him down faster. So that's basically how attack works. It works the same with wizards and as with clans that the characters will have. So that is how movement, that's how attack works. And then of course, after that, you're going to go ahead and draw your cards based on if you have these guys out or choose to do call to war, which is if you're on certain areas on the board, you can then summon the clans like I spoke about previously. And then you're gonna charge and collect. You'll charge certain spaces with their crystals and uh, you'll be able to use the abilities when it comes time for when they have a full amount. And then of course, you'll be drawing these cards here as well and uh, like I discussed before as well. And then it'll just pass on to the next player's turn. It'll go throughout these different rounds as everybody takes their actions up to the point where it gets to the 10th round. If everybody defeats, if somebody or person defeats everybody before the 10th round, they could declare the winner. However, if the 10th round hits and all players um, are still around, you're going to do what is called a victory point round or victory point as turn, turn of the game. You'll get one point for each HP you have for characters. You'll get 20 points for each clan that you killed. You'll get 20 po 30 points for each leader that you killed. And you also lose points based on the leaders and clans you killed. But that's not really relevant when you're playing a two-player game. Regardless, that's the basic idea for how the game is played. Remember that each of the characters, or each of the different clans, all have their own unique passive abilities, their own unique tokens that will function just like a wizard will and of course the fact that all of these cards will do different things and increase the changes in gameplay for gnomes and wizards all right let's come up and talk about it all right so some quick caveats before we begin my review for the game this being the fact that i want to talk about the clans just a little bit and the cards all the clans on the different character boards are different and have their own unique abilities based on how you gather the crystals and the number of crystals required for each clan, as well as the fact that all the clans have their own unique defense, their own unique HP, movement, and attack, which all function similar to what abilities they're they are coordinated with. Uh, so for instance, I can add flying counters to enemies and change the way they function with one clan. Another one adds damage on this turn, but won't allow me to do damage on the next turn. Switching places with an active unit, switching tiles on the board, all these different things. And of course, with the other board, the other player, they will also have different clans, and different functions. So choosing your clan is actually going to make a difference in a lot of ways. The cards here have those passive uh, abilities that you'll place on the characters, whether they be your leader or whether it be a clan and it's going to have a cost. It will allow you to knock out enemies, move tiles as well, and all those other kind of things. And you can just simply add them to a specific clan. Let me see this thing right here. Placing down below here and placing the crystals on, just like you would a passive ability on your player board. And then you're going to have cards like this, which you'll simply use when you choose to use them, placing them on the deck. This one here lets you move certain things to certain areas. I want to read one that's a little less long. In your efforts, you sh uh, when you're in your final efforts, you sound the horn louder than ever. Turn any one die outcome into a call of war. So one of the horns. And you may only play one boost the call per turn. And this is called boost the call. So you can change the, the way your die will be affected throughout the rolling aspect of the game. So let's talk about review now. All right. This game is a family style game, but at its heart, it has got a lot of tactics, a lot of strategy, and a lot of choices. And uh, the artwork is similar to old 80s cartoon style artwork. I like it. It's very vibrant. It's very uh, colorful. And uh, it has a lot of player um like board diversity the, the fact that the board is going to always be changing uh based on how you place it, it's never going to be the same board but the information is pretty much known the only bits of luck in the game are obviously the yahtzee style die rolling what cards you draw and how the board is situated at the very beginning but even that still is not a huge amount to it uh, so you're always going to be playing a different style of game with this and even with the clans it will change up quite a bit uh, one thing I can say is when you're playing with obviously two players it's likely the game can get one sided and one player can start dominating over another whereas in a game that has multiple players there's going to be team ups that can occur that will basically push a character back down to size and certain aspects of that is okay uh, player elimination the only thing I'm not a, a big fan of I don't like player elimination but in this game it doesn't really happen Happen. It's very unlikely unless you're extremely aggressive in your plays. Most likely it'll come down to scoring after the 10th round. And the game is actually rather quick. It was actually quicker than I, I, I thought based on how the box said. And uh, based on the number of players it gets added, there's a little bit of additional time. I don't want to talk about too much on the quality of the components because they're still very subject to change. But you saw what they look like. Some of them are really nice. Other ones are pretty 
simple bits that are going to be placed on the stickers and whatnot. So go ahead and check out the campaign and determine the quality and uh, artwork for yourself. Overall, it was a very enjoyable experience. I think it's going to find a nice fit in a niche area where it's going to be when you want to play a group of game, play the game with a group of experienced gamers. That's one setting for this game, and another is a very simple, stylized family version of an area control tactical game utilizing cute gnomes and wizards. Overall, I had an enjoyable experience with the game, and I suggest you take a look at it down below on Kickstarter. Gnomes and Wizards, a cute tactical war game that can get a little uncute when you when you really want to dig into it. Alright guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. Do it! Do it now! Watch the rest of our videos. Subscribe to all the things. And notification bell button. As well as UnfilteredGamer.com. It's a blog post, giveaways, Kickstarter, listen more. And forget about that if you want to check out our live stream. That doesn't make any sense at all. Our live stream, Wednesdays, 7.30 p.m. PST. We do a bunch of stuff. We did an RPG this last week. We give away games all the time on stream. We'd like to give away games to you. Join in on our family of peoples. And uh, if you want, you can donate a buck to us on Patreon. It goes towards shipping games to you guys. It, it, it's a lot of fun. We enjoy that. As well, check out our friends. Everythingboardgames.com, the giveaway geek. Show me how to win before you play. Cardboard stack or all those great people who have tons of great content, even more than my own. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to battling with you in Gnomes and Wizards next time. Pew, 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 pew. Get them. Get them, Gnomes and Wizards. Get them.